Welcome to another review, guys. This week we have something exciting, different, and rather bright, and that is the 2024 Hyundai Kona Hybrid in the N-Line pack. And let me tell you, I absolutely love this car. It's been an absolute fun car to drive. There's a couple of small niggles that I wish that Hyundai could fix and improve on, which I believe they actually are, so stay tuned to find out what those will be. But let's have a look at the outside. It looks fantastic. Depending on what time of day it is, what type of lights you're under, and maybe who's looking at the car, it's anywhere from yellow to like a yellowy green to a highlighter yellow, you name it, it kind of looks one of those. And the great part about it is because of the black highlights throughout the body and the clever design around the headlights and the rear light bar, it actually looks quite nice and a bit sporty. So definitely a great job by Hyundai on the styling for this particular car. Now. Let's talk about styling, and with that, what you're getting with this car. So, gorgeous light bar that goes the whole way through the top here. You have your headlights and your high beams down here as well. Also, you have front parking sensors, which makes parking an absolute breeze by giving you the distance measure when you're getting a little bit close and snug to the front of obstacles, or if you're reversing on the back, you also have the convenience of rear parking sensors. Now, you have a 360 degree camera system, so you have one camera here, plus one on either of the two mirrors and one at the back. And you have these active shutters down here as well. So whenever the car turns on, those shutters turn open up to allow for plenty of airflow. And throughout different stages of driving, they also shut off as well. So it gives it a nice, aggressive and clean look at the front, plus some styling highlights that are uniquely end line as well, making it a very sporty small to mid-size SUV. Now, one thing you would have noticed with the Kona is that it is slightly bigger than the previous model Kona, and nowhere is that different than in the boot. So let's go have a look at how much extra space you pick up. Now, at the back of the car, you have this very sporty and aggressive rear high wing spoiler. You have that LED light bar that goes the whole way across the back, which lit up at night, looks absolutely stunning. Down here, you have additional lights, your rear parking sensors, as mentioned earlier, and the rear camera as well that makes parking an absolute breeze. On this particular model, you do have a electric tailgate that goes up and down automatically. And if your boot is getting a little bit too close to the top of your garage or the bottom of the ceiling, what you can do is you can lower it to whatever height you need, push and hold this button down here, and that will program the boot height by giving you those beeps. So every time it opens and closes, it'll only open and close back to that position. So if we go to open that again, it'll go back exactly to that position. So some real good practicality in that setup as well. And the big win with the Kona in the 2024 model is the additional boot space compared to the previous model. So now you have a really deep and a really wide boot. So that if you need to put some larger suitcases, you're definitely going to fit them in here. Uh, now, when I picked this car up uh, on my way back from a trip, I had one extra large size suitcase, one carry-on size suitcase, and a really chunky laptop bag, all in the boot here with the parcel shelf still intact. So it was all fitted snugly under there without any real kind of problem. The old model Kona definitely couldn't do that. Uh, and I know that because we actually drove a Kona Electric, if you remember the early days of this channel, from Brisbane to Cairns, and we had to pack things into the back seat because we were really out of room in the boot. So great job there from Hyundai with this new spec. And being a hybrid, it does have a spare wheel instead of a tire replacement kit, and that spare wheel is a space saver as well. So plenty of things to love with this new setup on the Hyundai Hybrid Kona. Now, that spare wheel is a lifesaver if you plan to adventure and road trip with this car. So if you want to go on those adventures on the weekend or you want to go on a holiday halfway across the country, you're going to be 100% fine. Shopping bag hooks at the top there and a couple of little tie-down hooks on the sides just for anything like your shopping nets that stop things from moving around. That makes it an absolute breeze. And the rear child tether points for the back of the seats are directly behind that middle row so you're not going to lose any boot space either so a lot to love about the back of the kona electric but a lot more to love about the side and the inside so let's keep going now the side 
it looks sporty, sleek the whole way around. You have these black mirror highlights on here that match that rear spoiler, match the roof rails, and match some of the black on the, the, the alloy wheel design. So you're getting a really, really well-designed car that just absolutely hits the nail on the head from every angle that you look at this car. It just looks absolutely stunning. And as you can tell, I'm excited because I've just had an absolute blast in this car the whole time I've had it. One thing to mention with the hybrid model versus the standard petrol version, is that you get 18 inch alloy wheels instead of going for a larger size alloy, which means you get 18 inch tires instead of 19 inch tires. Now that adds a little bit of additional comfort and obviously better fuel consumption being hybrid. One of the things that you'll note with this car is the fuel consumption will hover around five liters per 100 Ks as an everyday user around city areas driving 60 to 80 Ks an hour with no highway driving. So if you're in the inner city and you wanna save a bit of money on fuel, this is definitely the car for you to check out. Now, let's go have a look inside the car. Now, stepping onto the inside, you're gonna have what is probably the one disappointing part about the inside of this car. Missed opportunity to have some sort of ambient lighting here. There is a little bit of lighting directly underneath this to illuminate the door pocket, but this overall just is a black piece of plastic with a little bit of soft padding here. Weirdly enough, this part here is not as soft as this part. So, bruh, look, you can't get everything right. It's the one thing I wish they would have actually paid more attention to. Uh, nice, big, deep bottle holders in the door pockets. So you're gonna be able to fit whatever you need in there, nice and snug. Bose audio system in the doors and all around you. So you're gonna get a really good sound system. And you also have your memory seat positions up here. So you can actually program two memory seats for you and your partner if you're sharing the car. Now, some small little things around here that would have been nicer to have is just maybe a little bit of breaking up of that, that color or just some slightly nicer materials. But outside of that, you can't really fault it. Inside, a little bit cluttered, but still sporty and nice. Red highlights on the air conditioning vents and that, that red highlight goes the whole way across the dash, even in between the air conditioning vents on the left-hand side. The steering wheel is height and reach adjustable. So no matter how close or far you sit from the steering wheel, you're gonna find the perfect place to be. And you have electric seats that are adjustable plus a lumbar support that is electric as well, making it a very comfortable seat for you to be in for long driving periods. You have sporty pedals down the bottom, uh, which are unique to the end lines. And with the steering wheel, it's a nice size, it's leather wrapped and fits nicely in your hands. Now you're probably wondering what these stalks here are. And now this is where things get a little bit annoying compared to how the previous model Kona was set up. So indicators on the right, windscreen wipers on the left, simple, straightforward. Both have auto wipers and auto headlights. So you're 100% set there. But this here is actually your gear selector. And so to get it into park, you push park at the top here, you twist it forward to go into drive and you twist it into or back towards yourself to get it into reverse. Now, I had a situation where I had to lean forward to scratch like my knee and I ended up accidentally knocking that into reverse uh, because I was already with my foot on the, on the brake um, while I was stopped at a set of lights. Obviously, I picked up on it straight away. I just thought it was a really weird placement of where to have this, where it could have been positioned slightly differently. Yes, it gives you a nice big center console area, but so does a couple of buttons that you just push and it says drive, neutral, reverse, and Bob's your uncle. So I'm not 100% sure why Hyundai chose this here for this design, because I'm not a fan of it. Uh, down here, you do have your electronic park brake nice and neatly out of the way. Plus you have a couple of other functions here and including your electronic boot release just down here. At the top here, you do have a driver assistance uh, alert sensor. Now this will pick up if you're yawning, if your eyes are darting away from the road, uh, it can get a little bit annoying and that is one thing that you can switch on and off in the center settings. Um, the other one is your speed sign alert. Now you can, turn that off. I actually turn it off because I find it a little bit annoying around Brisbane where in some areas there's a lot of roadworks and a lot of other things going on. It's picking up the wrong signs and it's setting off all sorts of alerts. So I have turned it off. The thing that annoys me by that is I then lose the actual speed indicator on the dash which 
In previous models prior to this update, it didn't actually do that. So you would still have the speed there, but you wouldn't be told that you're going over the speed limit, um, particularly with roadwork signs. So that's the one thing that I have heard Hyundai is working on to tweak that and make that a different adjustment. And you do have to turn that on and off every single time you get in the car. It's not unique to Hyundai. I've reviewed other cars that have the exact same headache and you've probably seen those videos already. So it's just one of those things where we over-regulate some of the technology a little bit in Australia. Now, to get off my rant, let's go to the rest of the car. Coming along to the center, um, you're going to have two big digital displays and this one in the middle is unique in that when you indicate, it will actually turn on a screen for the left or the right hand side that's feeding from those two wing cameras to show you what's in your blind spot, making it super easy to merge and change lanes or even just reversing into a parking spot as well. Now, come around to the side and I'll show you how the center stacks up. Now, moving into the inside, one of the things you notice straight away is the enormous amounts of space and just a very comfortable cabin to be in. Now, I'm holding my phone because you have a wireless charging pad down here, which means you can place this here and start charging your phone. Now, at the top here, you also have two USB-C inputs. Now, one of these will go and connect to your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And Apple CarPlay in this car is also available as wireless as well, which for anyone that has previously had any dealings with the old model Kona, you know that anything that had the satellite navigation in it couldn't have wireless CarPlay, only the base models. So a big improvement for this year. Dual zone climate control, nice and easy to use. And I love that Hyundai is still using buttons for these things here. Uh, same with any kind of hard buttons that need to go back for maps or searching or just changing um, radio station or media input source. So 100% love that there. The ignition button to turn the engine on and off is just here, nice and out of the way. And the steering wheel has all the controls that you need to do cruise control, lane departure alert and lane keep assist as well as setting the distance if you've got your active cruise control turned on. So great feature again through there. Now down here, you do have heated and ventilated seats for the front two seats. So you're gonna be really chilly in summer or really warm in winter. Your drive modes down here are easily selectable. So you can go from eco to sport to normal mode in the twist of a button. Camera mode, so you can see the cameras if you're up stationary or you just need to change the camera view. And your parking sensor button down here, if you need to turn your parking sensors on and off depending on your situation. Now, one other unique thing that some of our southern states might like a bit better than here in Queensland is the heated steering wheel. Now, the heated steering wheel is a lovely feature in places like Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, and some parts of Western Australia where it gets incredibly cold, but everywhere else, it's probably not a feature that you're gonna you know, need uh, throughout the rest of the year. You do have an odd auto hold button there, and what auto hold does is when you come to a stop at the set of lights, you just put your foot on the brake, as long as the auto hold is on, it will illuminate up on the dash, and it will hold the brake for you so that you, you're not having to keep your foot on the brake while you're waiting for that light to change. So that's it there. And a nice big glove box that's nice and roomy down here and a little bit of a storage area up here should your passenger wanna hold a phone or anything into there while you're driving. Now, the rest of the dash, just a nicer, hard-ish material, but it's textured so it doesn't feel as cheap as some of the other plastics that could be used on the dash. And your rear vision mirror is nice and clear and big as well. So very easy to get plenty of visibility around the car. Uh, sun visors both have little mirrors and little lights attached to them. Uh, the one thing with these sun visors is they also slide and that's the great thing on a long drive. So when we took this car up, well, the previous model Kona to Cairns, uh, we were able to position this perfectly so that when the sun was rising or setting on that, those longer rides, uh, we didn't have any of the sun coming in and hitting our face. Now, I say this as something so silly because if you're spending a lot of time in your car and particularly at times where you might get the sun coming in, it's often something you don't consider and not every car slides it and not every car has a well-designed sun visor. So again, really handy to just keep an eye on and double check. Outside of that, you've got these cool cup holders down here 
that do retract. So if you need to put a little bit of additional space down here, maybe you've got a big phone or maybe you, I don't know, have anything else you want to store down there, you can. But when it comes time to then use those cup holders, you just push that button and that flicks out nice and easily. Now, one thing I don't like about this car, Hyundai, what the hell are you thinking? I don't want to carry a small football around in my pocket. It is the most annoying key to have. It's not thin, it's just a really awkward shape for a key. If you're planning on sponsoring the NRL or the AFL or maybe the NFL, it probably is a great idea, but to be really honest, it's a little bit annoying. So maybe if you can change that for the next one, that would be 100% absolutely amazing. But I digress. Seats, super comfortable, and as I mentioned, they are heated and ventilated, and this armrest is actually positioned in a really nice uh, driving position. One thing I have noticed is I don't tend to rest my right arm uh, on any of the drives. I just generally tend to have my arm on the steering wheel because this is actually positioned really, really well and really comfortably. So great job by Hyundai there. And you have a little bit of additional storage down here that pops up, plus a nice open area down here where you can put additional items should you want to as well. Let's check out the back. Now in the back of the Kona, there's a much improved amount of leg room and a much more comfortable seating position than I remember from the old Kona. So if you have an old Kona and you've jumped in the new Kona, can you let me know in the comments if you think that there's a bit more room in the back? Because I certainly think there is. Uh, you have plenty of foot space underneath the front seat. So if you are a little bit longer in the legs, you're definitely going to be able to stretch out a little bit and be a bit more comfortable. Uh, this seat is actually further back than the driver's position. Uh, so it's definitely going to be, yeah, again, plenty of room. A little cargo net for whatever you need there. Bottle holder in the door. Uh, and outside of that, there's not much else that you need to know about the back. Two air conditioning vents down the bottom here so that that will keep you nice and cold or warm. And a little storage compartment down here with two USB-C charging points just there. And a little resting area so that you can chuck your phone or your device in there so that you can charge while you're driving. So really good job there. And one other thing as well, these back seats are actually heated. So you have the outer two seats on the back of this car as heated seats. So if you're getting cold or your kids are getting cold, you would actually be sitting here, flick that button on, and that will actually turn the rear seat heating. Great. All right, so guilty as charged. I'm slightly further back than we were a couple of seconds ago, and that's because I wanted to show you the armrest drops down from the center here with two cup holders. When you flick that up, you do have Isofix points down the bottom here on the back two seats on the outer edges. Center one doesn't get that. That means that if you do have any child seats that need to go into the car, you can put them in here if they're Isofix compatible. Just make sure as a handy tip for future parents, if you haven't purchased a car before while you've had your kid, or if potentially you're a new parent about to have a child and you are looking to buy a car and a baby seat, put this seat the whole way back, put the driver's seat in the driving position, and then fit your car seats in to make sure you're gonna have plenty of room and you're not gonna be uncomfortable and pushed the whole way forward just to fit that, that child seat in. So. Remember that tip from myself. Now, down here, once these seats come forward, the great thing is, is you have your child top tether points here for the child seats, so you're not gonna lose out on any boot space as well. So, once again, plenty of space and plenty to love about the new Hyundai Kona in the hybrid. Now, one of the things with this camera system is you have plenty of visibility here. You have a bird's eye, 360 degree view, Plus you have a nice and neat guided area here that also comes with movable guidelines. So you're going to know when you're parking well and when you're not parking all that well, just like me. Uh, you do have a full 360 3D model uh, that allows you to get a bit of a better view of how things are looking. Or we'll just go back to this view down here. Once it's back in park, if you wanna check out the other views and angles, you definitely have those opportunities there as well where you can check out the front camera, the two side cameras, or the front block bird's eye camera view, making it nice and easy for you to park however you need to park in the back of your car using this. So there you have it guys. Those are my impressions and my opinions and my thoughts about why you should go out and check out the Hyundai Kona 
hybrid. Now, they do have a petrol and an electric model, and both of those, we've got reviews coming for those as well. And they're equally just as fun from some of the things that I've so far been tested, but I genuinely think the hybrid is the best compromise between both of those for people wanting to save money on fuel, but also uh, just have an absolute blast discovering this great country or just driving really easily while not spending too much money on fuel. Go check it out. It's the Hyundai Kona Hybrid N-Line and you're going to absolutely love it. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have any other questions about this car, anything that you think we missed that you'd love to see in the next video, or if you have any other models that you'd like us to review that you may not have checked out with us before. Until next time, guys, it's Daniel, and I just want to say thank you for watching and thank you for commenting as always.